Guys, I'm, I'm glad to see smiles on your faces. <laughs> it was uh, so entertaining. Rick, Rick, go ahead. Just take it away. I, I just, I'm, first of all, Rachel Maddow, word salad. I thought I was listening to Kamala Harris. The, 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 <laughs> there were more, too, that your producer sent me, of people just losing their mind over this. God forbid the Supreme Court should consider an argument. Isn't that what they're there for? And they're saying, oh, but there, there are six Republicans on the court. We, we do need a fair mix of conservatives and liberals on a Supreme Court, right? I mean, federal judges are Democrats outnumber Republicans and lower courts, Democrats outnumber Republicans. Yeah, for right now, there's an extra Republican uh, appointed by a Republican president. But I mean, this is what this is how the system is supposed to work. And they're losing their minds because the case is actually going to be considered by the highest court in the land. It's just it's silly. They're, they're so angry that Trump might have a chance to make an appeal to 350 million people that live in this country is what they're really angry about. Yeah. He shouldn't have that chance, especially when they look at the polls. They don't believe that. Mike, how should this case be decided? What happens to the presidency if immunity is removed? So members of Congress have uh, uh, they have immunity from both criminal and civil prosecution for their official acts. So do federal judges. Right now, it is established that the president is immune from civil prosecution because a former president has never been charged. And so what I think the Supreme Court is going to do here is they are going to establish that the president, any president, is immune from, from criminal prosecution for his official acts, his official acts, not his private acts. Yes. And then the Supreme Court will remand this case to the lower courts to figure out what was official and what was personal. And that's, uh, you know, that that's not groundbreaking. That is what the Supreme Court should do. And I, I just, you know, you, you th so you think this will get, I mean, I, I guess the question then becomes, Mike, uh, is, you know, if, if you have a rally at the Capitol, I mean, I, it, it, at the end of the day, it's, it's a terrible case to begin with, right? I mean, it, it, he, he should win it even if it, it, it goes and, and he's charged. I, I can't, I can't see him you know, not winning it, but he, he has a rally at the Capitol. Is that, a, is that an, is, that's not an official act, I guess, right? Well, no, that what they're charging him with is that, first of all, it's not illegal to object to a presidential election. It's allowed by the Electoral Count Act of 1887. Democrats right. objected to Republican wins in 1968, 2000, 2004, 2016. We don't see John Kerry, Hillary Clinton, Al, Al Gore in prison yeah. for objecting, right? And what they're <laughs> charging Trump with is, for example, he wanted to fire his attorney general. Well, a private citizen can't fire the attorney general. Only the president of the United States can fire the attorney general. So that would be immune from criminal prosecution. And think about what, the, what they're trying to establish here. If you can charge a president for his official acts, then the Trump 47 Justice Department can prosecute Obama for capital murder for drone striking American citizens, including a minor. That's very interesting. I got to leave wow. it there. Mike Davis, Rick Leventhal, good to see you both. Thank you so much. You too, Rob. Illinois.